What is up guys, Austin awesome Nurcho here, back again with another Monday Night Rewind podcast going back 20 years to the Monday Night Wars between WWF Raw and WCW Nitro, covering episodes from the corresponding week. And so this week we are going to August 25th, 1997. So this week is a little weird. Um, this week we only have Nitro, so there is no Raw this week because Raw was actually, I think, instead a called Friday night main event or something for two weeks so this week and next week there will be no Raws so instead of being on Monday they were moved to Friday because of I think it's tennis the US Open so whatever that is I believe it's tennis so there's no Raws and they're not on the network and I tried looking on YouTube and I couldn't find them and I don't know if they're like normal actual Raws or if they're just like one hour shows of pre-recorded stuff I'm not exactly sure but we're kicking off or not really kicking off we're starting with the only show there is of Nitro and this is Nitro 102, and this took place in Columbia, South Carolina. Um, so to kick off the show, we um, starts off with uh, commentary, the, so the commentary table of Larry Zabisco, Mike Tanay, can think of what his name was, and Tony Schiavone, and they're just talking about the events of the Clash of Champions, which was last Thursday. Um, and so uh, they're mostly talking about the whole Sting and NWO stuff. So um, we they're talking about how Sting gave a clear notice of what he wanted so clearly pointing out that he wants you know the NWO and more specifically Hogan and so like it shows video from that and it shows him first starting out with him up in the rafters and that he has a bird on his arm I believe it's a vulture at least they said something like that I don't know if it really was it's a weird looking bird but the closest thing I could think of was a vulture so he has that on his arm and then the lights go out and they come back on and the vulture is on the um, ring ropes and so the members of the NWO are trying because they're in the ring this whole time um they're trying to like get the bird to fly away and like eric bischoff goes walking towards him like is grabbing towards his feet so i thought maybe it had like you know a note on it or something and he was trying to get off but as he started to reach for it it started like peck at his hand and stuff and then the whole time kevin nash is standing there with the title um his hands on one part um side of the title so like the strap part of the title and it draping over his shoulder and he's holding on with two hands like he's getting ready to swing at the bird and you know trying to fight off in there all the other people are just like backed off scared away from it um so we got that and um so again they're talking about sting showing that he's after the nwo and wants a shot at hogan and so the show opens up with mean gene um doing an interview in ring with eric bischoff and he's talking i forget what he mentions but they get end up getting a call from jj Dillon during the whole conversation and so they're talking to him and he's on the phone um, so talking through like you know the audio stuff or whatever through the building um but uh on the phone, JJ says that he promises to sign the match between Sting and Hogan by the end of the year. So by the past, it made it seem like he was going to try and do it earlier but this um it would now explain why it happens at the end of the year at their very last pay-per-view in december at least i believe it does um so then uh bishop um starts saying you know after jj says that bishop starts saying you know that um the match with hogan will not happen where between sting and hogan will not happen because you know hogan's way too busy he's got movies to do and all sorts of other personal stuff he's gotta do so the sting will never or the sting the match will never happen and while he's saying all that sting ends up coming down um to the ring through the ramp not from the rafters this time and he confronts um eric and so he's like messing around with eric he pulls out a hulk hogan shirt and he sticks it over the top of eric's head i don't know why he did that he just like lay set it or stuck it on top of his head and eric couldn't see because you know the shirt was over his head and then he pushes eric over i believe with the baseball bat or maybe just kick him over and so eric's laying on his back and sting comes up grabs the shirt and starts shoving it down eric's mouth so um kind of like sticking it to eric there next up we then get a raven promo again he's going on about something i couldn't i don't know i'm just probably not smart enough forever to understand raven or if he's just talking weird stuff it's kind of like bray wyatt nowadays he's just talking about stuff it sounds all really cool and ominous and everything but it's hard to understand and realize what he's actually talking about there from that goes on to a nitro our first nitro girl segment and so no one cares about that and we get into our first match of psychosis and la parka and they come out with sunny ono and they're going against glacier and ernest miller so starts off first uh or early on uh, la parka ends up kicking psychosis in the face while he's in the corner because la parka uh has I can't, I believe it was Glacier, it could have been Ernest Miller, but one of them over in the cor in their corner, and he goes to kick him, but the person ducks, and he ends up hitting Psychosis. Then later on, Psychosis ends up 
um, dropping a top rope elbow onto her Laparka because he was going for Glacier, because Glacier was uh, going for or pinning Laparka, but so Psychosis got on top rope, went to drop do a uh, elbow to break up the pin, but Glacier noticed it moved, and so Psychosis hit the elbow on Laparka. So they're just kind of hitting each other back and forth throughout this match. Then later on, we get Laparka hitting um, ends up hitting Glacier who um, is pinning Psychosis this time. And he's doing that while the um, ref is dealing with Ernest Miller in the corner. And then, so like, you know, I think he actually hits him with a chair. I th forgot to write that down, but I believe he goes out and uh, grabs a chair and comes in and hits him with the chair on the back. And then because, you know, the ref is distracted, it doesn't get disqualified. And then Laparka grabs um, Psychosis and flips it over. So he ends up flipping Psychosis on top of Glacier, who then gets the pinfall out of that. So because of the chair shot, Psychosis and Laparka get the win. Um, next up, uh, or following that, Ultimo Dragon comes running out to the ring and he's, you know, trying that. I don't know if he's really saying it because he speaks Japanese, but he's like trying to say, you know, to the ref that um, Laparka, you know, used a chair and that they cheated and everything. Thing. And while he's doing that, Silver King then comes running out and starts attacking Ultimo Dragon. And then all four of Laparka, Psychosis, Silver King, and then Sunny Ono joins in as well. They all start um, fighting and attacking Ultimo Dragon. We go to a commercial break and come back and then get a match between Ultimo Dragon versus Silver King. So throughout the match, uh, at one point, uh, Ultimo Dragon uh, barely gets up, or to start off the match, I should say, um, Ultimo Dragon barely gets up for the bell because after, you know, the events before the commercial, Ultimo Dragon's kind of laid out, and so he's, you know, in the ring, you know, really weak and stuff, and so the ref's trying to get Ultimo Dragon up to so he can sound the bell, and once he does get up in the ring, ref you know, signals for the bell ring for the match to start. Silver King immediately just starts attacking Dragon. Uh, Silver King performs, um, he does a super kick and moonsault at one point, so I thought that was kind of cool. They were like really good looking versions of both those, a super kick and a moonsault. Uh, let's see, later on, King goes for a senton bomb, or senton, whatever Tozawa does, so he like lands on his back type thing. Um, he goes for that, and but Dragon ends up moving. And off of that, dra um, Dragon gets a drop kick on King as he jumps off the top rope. And the match ends off with Dragon um, hitting a Hurricane Rata on um, Silver King off the top because Silver King's up on the top rope. And so Ultimate Dragon gets up and does a Hurricane Rana off of the top rope with him and then picks him up and puts him in the Dragon Sleeper and Silver King taps from that so Ultimo Dragon gets the win. Next up, Scott Hall and Macho Man with Elizabeth come out onto the ramp to deliver a promo. Um, once again, Scott Hall saying you know, that he, that the NWO is the reason why everyone is here and watching and that everyone wants to be a member and speaking of new members, um, he says we have a new member of DDP and they discuss, you know, that uh, DDP um, hit the diamond cutter on Lex Luger. And so you get the, I think at one point, I can't remember if it's during this or right after, they end up cutting to the footage from Clash of Champions and their match of, I can't remember who was in the match. I know obviously DDP and Lex Luger, I can't remember if they were going against Scott Hall and Kevin Nash or who it was exactly, but DDP ends up getting blinded by one of them and he ends up getting hit in the back because one of them, the NWO members ends up pushing Luger into the back of DDP and so you know he's saying he's being attacked or whatever and he's standing up you know grubbing his eyes trying to you know be able to see again and he bumps into a guy quickly grabs onto him because he you know bumps in for the diamond cutter angle and immediately just drops the diamond cutter and it was on Luger so they're they're claiming here that DDP by doing that was signaling he's joining the NWO but DDP never comes out and so they kind of move on from that and they say that, you know, ever since um, Road Wild, uh, Lex Luger is on the decline and that he has no friends in WCW anymore. And so that's the end of their whole promo segment. After that, we get Mean Gene doing an interview on the ramp. And this time it's with DDP, so he actually comes out this time. He says that uh, the Diamond Cutter, or Mean Gene asks, was the Diamond Cutter on purpose or was it an accident? And DDP ends up responding with saying that um, the Diamond Cutter was an accident and that he's definitely not joining the NWA. He says, you know, both of those accusations are ludicrous and that they're never going to happen and that, that him and Lex Luger are meeting in the back face to face and that they're working things out, getting things back on the mend. And then next up from there, we get a Jeff Jarrett with, um, who comes out with Deborah, and he's going in a match against Chris Benoit. And, uh, this move, our match was actually pretty decent. Um, it's full of a uh, good fast pace or it's a good fast paced match and it has a lot of solid moves going on. Like there's not very many botches or, you know, misses. Everything's just very, um, 
quick like a snap and they're very smooth and fluid and everything um so at one point outside the ring Jarrett uses Deborah to block her from Crispin Mall um so usually about every match so far Jarrett has used Deborah and then back in the ring uh Ben winds up going um, off the top rope for a diving headbutt, but, but Jeff Jarrett moves, and then later on, Benoit gets the superplex off the top rope on Jarrett, but Jarrett, so this is really weird, so B Benoit grabs Jeff Jarrett off the top rope, does the superplex, you know, which is a really strong move, but as soon as they hit the mat, Jeff Jarrett rolls the thing up and gets Benoit into a cradle and gets the pin off of it, so he pretty much just no-sells a superplex and gets the win off by doing a cradle out of the superplex, so I've never seen that before, and it just makes no sense at all, but Jarrett end up getting the win off of that. Then from there we get another Nitro Girl segment. So we're just gonna move on. And then that leads into another Mean Gene uh, promo. And this time it's for the Nitro Party and our Nitro Party contest and that, you know, talking about how the winner will get a party. And included in that um, like contest or whatever or if you win the gift will be wherever you have your party it'll he'll show up as in mean gene the nitro girls wildcat willie which i never knew a single thing about wildcat willie till watching these nitros because you always see him in the background he's never featured but like a, every time someone will come walk to the ring or not every time but sometimes people will be walking like you know towards the ring um up the entrance and like as they're filming and you can see behind him, you'll see him like stick his head out into the entrance ramp and stuff. And I was like, what the heck is that furry creature? It looks like Alf to me, but um, he used to look more like a cat but now he looks more like Alf if you know what Alf looks like, but he's in like a purple spandex outfit, like almost wrestling outfit. And he has a bandana, purple bandana and everything. But he's just kind of a um, WCW mascot thing. And then so in the, so you get that and then you get a Nitro Party pack in the pack they said includes a shirt, hat, stickers, and then thumb wrestling pack. I don't know if that's what the stickers were, but they were like little wrestler faces you could put on your fingers and then you do, or your thumbs, and then you like thumb wrestling with it. It's really stupid. So that's, I guess, kind of cool if you wanted to win that. I think having, you know, people come to your house or whatever for a party would be much better than the pack you get. But from there, we move on to another match of the Faces of Fear. So Ming and Barbarian versus Mortis and Wrath with James Vandenberg, or Vandenberg. If I can say his name right. Um, so to start off, we get a replay of last week of um, Wrath versus Barbarian, or I can't remember if it's Ming or Barbarian. Um, but anyway, so um, we get into the match, um, and at one point, Vandenberg ends up grabbing on the bar Barbarian's leg as he's you know bouncing off the ropes. And but um, with that distraction, Wrath is able to deliver a big boot on bar Barbarian, and then later on. Uh, Wrath does a walk across the second rope, so kind of like Undertaker's move, but without holding on to a guy, and it's on the second rope instead of the top rope. And so he walks across the rope to about the, a fourth of the way, or closer to half or something, and he then jumps off and with an elbow drop onto Barbarian. And then later on, Ming and Bar both Ming and Barbarian do a diving headbutt off the top rope, so uh, I believe the ref is destructed. Can't remember if it's on Mortis or Wrath that they do that, but it's on one of them, obviously. Um, but then Mortis ends up going for a double axe handle off the top, but as he's coming down, Ming catches him with the tongue and death grip, and then Ming, like, while holding the grip, forces Mortis down to the ground and is holding him down and gets the win because he, uh, or pins uh, Mortis off of that. And then Wrath and Mortis, or Ming, start fighting with each other. And so it's just a whole chaos in the ring, and that ends the segment. And now we move on to hour two, and we get a kicking off with a Mean Gene interview in the ring with the Four Horsemen. So this is kind of a big segment in Four Horsemen history. And so it means it starts out with, uh, I think it's uh, Ric Flair, Chris Benoit, Steve Mongo McMichaels. And Flair gets on the mic and really calls out uh, Kurt Henning. And he's like, we're going to finally settle this. We're going to determine, you know, if Kurt's a member of the Four Horsemen or not. So Kurt comes out and said that, he, you know, he's not ready to give an answer whether, you know, he belongs in the Four Horsemen or not. And so Rick says, you know, I helped solve this issue, whatever I want to call out my best friend and he calls out Arn Anderson and Arn Anderson comes out and ends up delivering his retirement speech and he talks about end up giving his spot to Kurt Henning and you know he mentions that he's not giving Kurt Henning a spot on the four horsemen he's giving him his spot because he had neck problems that led to nerve issues in his left arm and he talked about he was in the gym and a guy patted him on the back and that shouldn't have sent a shock through his arm and he ended up dropping his water that he was drinking and so he learned if that's what happens you just from a pat on the back that he you know he can't wrestle anymore so he ends up giving this as his retirement speech and so Kurt ends up because of all you know all this sentimentalness and everything Kurt ends up accepting Arn's spot as the enforcer on the four horsemen so it's um, just kind of a nice spot or a nice segment here giving um, Arn's retirement you know being a big 
member of the Four Horsemen and everything. And he still works, you know, for WWE now. So he's a big person in history in the wrestling business. Um, but of course, then I don't think this whole good feeling stuff lasts very long. I don't remember how much longer, but I know it's not for much. We then get from there leading into an Eddie Guerrero versus Steve Mongo McMichaels match. And as soon as they get in the ring and bell rings, Eddie immediately attacks Mongo's legs, you know, to try and get him down to, you know, take down size wise the big man or big guy compared to Eddie. And there's not much really of note that goes on through the match, but um, Steve McMichaels ends up getting the win off with a tombstone pile driver, so using the Undertaker's move there. And then from there, we get another Mean Gene interview. Mean Gene's just all over everything, but it's an interview on Ramp with Rey Mysterio Jr., and Ray comes out talking about that he's still having problems with his knee. So if you remember from a few episodes ago, you know, Ray was out on crutches and stuff and he had knee problems. But then he um, was faking a thing with Conan and they end up having their match at Road Wild. Well, Ray comes out saying, you know, he should have never ended up having that match with Conan because it ended up, you know, hurting his knee more. And so now he's going to go see the famed uh, Dr. Andrews, which you still hear a lot, of, a lot about today in wrestling, who's like a surgeon of some sort on injuries like um sports related injuries and stuff and so that he's gonna go see him and then conan ends up coming out and starts threatening ray saying calling him a little man and stuff and saying he got a fake knee problem and like tries to like go at him again and stuff well then the giant ends up walking out and that causes conan to go running off back or to the back and stuff and so Co the giant pretty much comes out and saves ray and they ended up hugging and stuff and walking off to the back. That then leads into Eric Bischoff. Um, he comes walking out to commentary. I don't know where he comes from, but it's like from the back, but not the entrance area. And so he walks up to commentary and he ends up, um, you know, coming to join commentary and kicks out Bobby Heenan and Mike Tanay. So it's just um, Bischoff and uh, Tony on commentary now. Um, and at one point, Tony makes a horrible joke saying, you know, because Eric's obviously, you know, using threats and stuff against Tony. And Tony goes, oh, wait, I think Sting's behind you or something like that. And he's, then he just starts giggling to himself for some like trying to like fake Eric out. But it's just kind of funny and stuff but um while on commentary eric starts you know making threats against larry zabisco that you know he may have got a i want to say like ahead of him or some sort of like thing on him last week but this week you know eric's thinking ahead and so you know he's coming out the commentary stuff so zabisco ends up coming out on zabisco now and he can get arrested because of their straining order and everything but then we get into our next match and um starts with uh yuji Yuji Nagata, which is, a, I believe, a Japanese wrestler, and he's going against Chris Jericho, which is um, the Cruiserweight Champion. He won the championship at Clash of Champions, and so this is a title match, and so again, throughout the match, some of the highlights or whatever, uh, Chris Jericho um, ends up hitting a moonsault onto Nagata, but he almost misses it, like pretty much just his arms hit Nagata, and then from there, Jericho rolls him over into the Lion Tamer, and gets the win off of that. We then have our Lee Marshall with or Lee Marshall with his road report, and he's coming from Pensacola, Florida. And again, just advertising where they're going to be next week, and if you need, you know, live or whatever, and want tickets, there's still some tickets left and stuff. And we go to our last Mean Gene interview of the night, and this time it's um, on the ramp with Harlem Heat and um, their new manager person, whatever, of Jacqueline or Miss Jackie, and they're just talking about how they should be the number one contenders and that they respect the Steiners and everything, but it's their turn to get a chance and so the Steiners end up with uh, Ted DiBiase end up walking out and they claim you know that they deserve the title shot because of the events at Road Wild where they technically won but through like cheating or whatever the NWO did they didn't get the actual titles and then after that Buff and Scott Norton Buff Bagwell and Scott Norton end up walking out with Vincent and then um, they talk about that neither of the teams de um, deserve the face Hall and Nash and then they all just start arguing and you can't hear what's going on and stuff and then that leads into a Nitro Girls segment and from there we go to um, another match of Alex Wright versus Dean Malenko and so with this match and those two um you know cruiserweight i think they're both considered cruiserweight um you get many technical holds and reversal especially from malenko and so it's kind of a pretty decent match um at one point there's an alex sucks chant going so we still get that stuff today and it's happening back 20 years ago uh malenko ends up uh, getting the um, Texas Cloverleaf put on put on Alex Wright, but Jeff Jarrett and Eddie Guerrero end up coming out and attacking Malenko, and then all three start attacking Malenko. So obviously it's a DQ, and no one actually or Malenko I guess technically wins, but 
So that segment ends with all three attacking them. We then go to a night, an Indio Vio commercial again for the six shirt. So they're trying to sell that with the cue ball and the, or not cue ball, but the pool um, ball, whatever they call it. And with the green ball with the six on it. And then we get a last Nitro Girl segment. And from there we go to our main event of Macho Man coming out with Elizabeth against Lex Luger. At one point in the match, Macho ends up um, doing like a motion, like weird thing with Santa I'm wondering like, what's he doing? Well, right after that, and he's like doing it in a direction and that direction is Miss Elizabeth or Elizabeth at this point. And uh, she goes up and gets up on the eight ring apron, which then distracts the referee. And then at that point, Macho Man grabs Lex and just throws him out of the ring. So I don't know why he needed a distraction just to throw him outside the ring because that can happen at any point. And so while they're outside of the ring, Macho Man ends up taking Luger and throwing him into um, the railing and then the ring post, just trying to beat him up on the outside. And I don't know, but it looks like during while he's doing this, that Luger's maybe trying to um, cut himself so like to bleed. So like, you know, would have a razor or some cut it because he keeps rubbing his hands across his forehead and like his tape around his wrist which is usually a, a place where a lot of guys hide their razors to cut and so I, I keep feeling like so I kept watching you know to see if he come up with blood because I'm like if he is he's clearly like in the open you know doing it because you're supposed to do it when it's like hidden and stuff but he never has blood on him so I don't know what he was doing but it just looked like he was trying to cut himself the whole time but as this is going on Lu Macho gets back in the um, ring and then Luger keeps trying to get in the ring but every time he does Macho ends up knocking him off either like kicking or punching him just knocking him back off the apron onto the ground and he's not letting Luger back in but then um, Macho Man ends up throwing Luger back in and when he does he puts him in a sleeper hold well as he's got the hold on Lex Luger starts as they say hulking up so he's doing you know like the Hulk Hogan moves of shaking and getting stronger or whatever and stuff to break out of the hold and so Luger, Luger then gets the upper hand in the match and he gives three I don't know what they call him but a forward facing um, atomic drop so pretty much the crotch on the knee and then he does his forearm on Macho of course setting him up for the wreck and as he's doing that Scott Hall comes running out and he gets on up on the apron but at this point Macho Man's you know back up and Lex is getting ready to do the um, torture rack but um, he ends up shoving Macho Man and Macho Man hits Scott Hall and so Scott Hall falls off the ramp or off the apron and stuff and then DDP comes running out to help, help Lex Luger again and uh he starts to help Lex Luger up and as he's doing it Lex Luger you know thinks it's either Scott Hall or Macho Man and so he immediately just grabs him picks him up and puts him up in the torch rack and starts torturing him and that's how Nitro leads off so of course causing problems between Lex and DDP so that is it for um the Monday Night Rewind podcast this week of course no we're all unfortunately and there won't be one next week either so then the following week we will get both back on with Nitro and Raw but that was it for Nitro 102 from August 25th 1997 um, so that was our rewind back to the Monday Night Wars from this week so if you enjoyed this podcast please leave a thumbs up leave any comments you have down below and hit the red subscribe button to see more and we'll see you next time